All right, so Doug, walk me through the uh, the bag here. I've got kind of a little mix set, some Callaways, some Pings. I have G20s from yeah. Ping, but eventually the six iron and the hybrid ended yeah. up looking like that. So I reached back into the bag from 15 years ago and found my original set of Diablos nice. and pulled them out for all the clubs that have broken over the last 12 years. Well, perfect. Well, let's, uh, let's get you warmed up. <laughs> and once we get warmed up, We'll throw you on track, man. We'll get some data with these current clubs that we have. Okay. Talk about where we're good, where we can improve, and then we'll start hitting some new heads, new shafts, things like that. All right? We'll be focusing on where I can improve because there's not a lot I'm good at. Where I'm able to hit every shot 10 yards that way and 80 yards over there. Just, it's usually a, club just a shank. Oh. Yeah, that was 400 times better than normal. All right. Got my big wedge that's supposed to go 110. And that was a beautiful 80 yards right there. All right, Doug, so now that you're warmed up, we're yeah. going to start with your current 7 iron so we can compare apples to apples, right? We're going to have you hit about five or six shots on track, man. Okay. Look at the average that we have. So not the one good one, not the one bad one. And then we're going to go through and compare that as we switch out different heads, different shafts. Okay. To see what performs best for us. So the 7 iron ping has already been destroyed. So this is a club that is about 15 years old. So here we go. And yes, this is my current 7 iron. <laughs> All right, Doug. So TrackMan collects data off everything we hit. It'll show us. Me included. Any number we wow. want to know. Any number. So I want to look at an average. So what we're going to do is going to come in here, pull up our average, blow this up. So our average club head speed, 83 miles an hour, right? Average ball speed. So how fast that ball is actually leaving is mm -hmm. 110. Now what that tells how me far is, am I away from the PGA on that? Maybe LPGA. Oh, <laughs> but what I look for is I go, okay, we swing at 83. That's what we have. We can improve that. Yeah. But how do we use that 83 miles an hour efficiently? Well, it's not 110. Right, this number right here, smash factor, tells me how efficiently do we transfer that 83 of club head speed into ball speed. Okay. Right now, PGA Tour average when we're talking efficiencies, closer to about 1.36, 1.37. Okay. So without us doing any more work, different head, different shaft, can get our ball speed to increase. Roughly every miles an hour ball speed, you're looking at like two and a half yards. Wow. So just as simple as increasing ball speed by two miles an hour, we pick up five yards right there. And that's before looking at any launch angle, spin rate, height, or any other number. And that's as simple as just more modern clubs more are a big jump in that. Or a different style of shaft that performs better for your swing. Okay, right? okay. If I have, you know, little Miss Beth who's 85 years old and doesn't swing it very fast, and she's got her husband's cut down, heavy, stiff clubs, yeah. that's not going to be very efficient for her. Okay. So if I get her into something that's more efficient for her... Then of course that's why club fittings are important because yes. it, it, regular like, joe does not know that i don't know that it's like going to get a custom tailored suit right can mm -hmm. you go buy one off the rack and it be okay yes is it perfect for you yeah. no you'll kind of know maybe nobody else will know. there's not a lot of six one guys that are 240 so the suit <laughs> fitting is very important <laughs> but that's what i relate it to a lot because a lot of guys can understand that They're like oh yeah that makes sense i've got that one custom tailored suit that fits perfect yeah my one you know from the department store is not bad but it's not the same okay and so if we're playing you know, a decent amount of golf, I go, let's go ahead and this get is clubs that are right for you. This is worth it. Yes. So, so first thing I'm going to start you with is TaylorMade QI-10 club head. We're going to adjust lie angle and some other things as we start hitting more and more setups. Wow, okay. But where I want to start is I want to get you into something that's possibly a little too light and soft in flex and then something that's possibly a little too heavy and stiff and start real wide. Why? Then, Why not just go in the middle it. first? Well, because I don't know which way we're going to go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right? I want to make sure we try everything so okay. that when we leave the fitting, it's I know this is the best performing head and shaft for me. It's not a, well, shit, we didn't try that. Yeah. So I want to make sure we check all the boxes. We have the best performing setup for you and your golf swing. Because you and your golf swing are going to be different than me and my golf swing, right? So just because we might swing at the same speed, we might deliver the club quite a bit differently, which means I need a different lie angle, a different shaft, different length, 
We haven't even talked about grip yet at the mm -hmm. end. So I go, there's going to be other things that factor into that. Okay. Wow. I could tell a massive difference. Oh my goodness. It's so weird having a normal grip. Because I always thought since I have long skinny fingers, I liked wide grips, but I feel like I control the club a little differently now. And then I do that. Dramatic difference with that. In feel, now how does it look looking down at it compared to what you have? I can, f when I look, it just, it feels sleeker, you know, okay. and, it, and I can actually feel it on, especially on the downswing. Gotcha. More of the power is transferring from my hand to the ball with that. So that shaft was about 20 grams, 25 grams heavier than what we've currently got now. Now I'm gonna go on the lighter realm, okay. right, and see how performance gets affected here. Okay. And so again, as you're hitting shots, the biggest thing I always tell my students is you're gonna tell me look and feel, right? I don't want you to tell me, hey, this, you know, this feels better, this feels worse, this looks better, this looks worse, or I can't really tell it. When it comes to look, what am I looking at? Club head, shaft, grip. Okay. Right? Just the whole... Do, do, yeah. Do, yeah. I, do I like the way this club looks? Okay. Right? Okay. We're not going to buy a car if we don't think it looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we probably don't want golf clubs that we don't like the look of. Okay. Now, again, we're going lighter and softer in flex. Okay. Ryan, I love that you're here. <laughs> We're shots like that. All right. Slow down just a little bit. Yeah, it felt great. All right, so Doug, this is what I want to show you here. So remember we talked about club head speed and club yes. speed and how much you know, it can change. So our average club speed with our current 7-iron was at 82.8, we'll mm -hmm. call it 83. We've hit two balls with this new setup, average club head speed's 83. So we swing them 0.2 miles an hour faster yeah. with the new club. But our ball speed with the new club is 118 wow. compared to 110.3 wow. with ours. So now when we look at distance, right, that's why we're hitting it 20 yards further. Oh my gosh. Because well, it's coming off 8 miles an hour faster. Well, and there's, there's actually... This might sound crazy. I have a little more confidence with the newer one. So there's room to go up on club head speed. Oh, yeah. Normally when I go up on club head speed, the results get worse. Yes. But now that the ball's going a little more true with this, I feel like I can Swing go a little more Babe Ruthish. Well, and your confidence, if we have if we have confident with seven iron, that's gonna lead into short game. Yeah. It's gonna lead into drive. It's gonna lead into other things in our bag as well. So it helps us hit better iron shots. It's also going to help us just play better golf in general. Shows you what a great teacher Brandon is because there's nothing that can build confidence with the short game. So I like how he said that. So we like the feel of the first one, which mm -hmm. was heavier and stiffer, right? But we actually hit kind of this one a little bit better performance wise. So now, like I said, we're going to bring that kind of window in. So I'm going to keep this same shaft, but I'm going to go up in weight and then up in flex as well to figure out how do we get one that feels solid to you and also gives us really good numbers and data. For my game, what does flex benefit me? So the difference in flex, right, if we go something much softer in flex, there's going to be a lot more torque, a lot more motion in this club head at impact, which means typically the ball is going to go higher, right, can also go more sideways if it's also ah. correct. Now, if we go stiffer, right, club head doesn't move as much, less torque, ball goes lower, in essence, it should go straighter. It's not always that case. So in my language, flex equals forgiveness? Yes. Okay. Well, and club head, right? Because yeah. again, if I throw you in something more of a blade style head, right, with a smaller sole, we don't have as much room in forgiveness. Uh. Where if we go something like this, where I've got a little bit of room, a wider sole, some more forgiveness, that's also going to help us with launch yeah. and getting it up in the air. And when we happen to miss hit it, which we will, 
right? Our missets are going to be greenside, not in the middle of the yeah. desert somewhere. Well, after 27 years of marriage, I need help with forgiveness and launch angle. All right. All right, so Doug, we've got TaylorMade QI-10 irons, MMT golf shaft. The reason we went with that is even though club head speed's a little bit slower on average by about two miles an hour, our ball speed actually increased by three miles an hour. Yeah. So we've got faster ball speed now, and we were working on a few things. So I right, think right. as we continue to work together on things, this club head speed is actually going to get back to that 83, if not increase. Okay. The other thing, because of our faster ball speed, one, we're hitting it a little higher. That's two, nice. Well, that's seven feet higher? Seven feet higher oh my on gosh. average. And now we're hitting the ball. Our average distance with our current seven iron was 161. Our average with the new setups up to 175. So and 175 I mean, is probably a normal human seven iron. And before I was 14, 15 yards yeah. behind that. I mean, we picked up almost two clubs. So oh my now gosh. instead of like five iron going into the green, yeah. you're going to have like seven iron into the green, wow. which is definitely going to help yeah. one with dispersion, but two, just help the scores come down. Yeah. And I did all that with a lower club head speed. Yeah. So the more I work on it, the more we work on it, that that's going to go up. Oh yes. And then obviously then the distance goes up. Yeah. Wow. I know. Doug, I love it, man. Thank oh, you thanks. for coming out. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Hey, this is what it, what you get when you do a whirlwind golf lesson with Brandon, but more specifically a club fitting. And look, I picked up 14 yards in a lesson. These, these aren't even my clubs yet. Guess what I'm going to do when I get them? Keep following us right here at Whirlwind Golf or me at Unplugged Doug and be able to follow my progress. And remember, I stink and you can get better very quickly. <laughs>